I used to live in a suburb of Omaha on a cul-de-sac. Down the street, there was a small forest right on the Missouri River where I would sometimes hang out. I was about 15 or 16 when one of my friends suggested we go camp back out there. Since it was only two blocks from my house, my parents didn't have a problem with me and my friend doing it. We set up the tent during the day and after dinner headed down there to spend the night. We had our flashlights to find our way and built a very small fire a few feet from the tent. Spent some time laughing and joking, usual teen stuff. Once we decided to hit the sack, we put out the fire and got into our sleeping bags. My friend was out right away, but I couldn't settle in. So I pulled out my flashlight and began to read a comic I had brought with me. Must have been about 30 minutes later that I heard a twig snap. Kind of alarmed me. There are no big animals out there that I knew of. I mean, we were right off of a very populated suburb. Thought maybe it was someone coming through to get to the river and do some night fishing or something. Heard another loud snap, and this time I shut off my light. If it was a person, I didn't want any visitors. After a few minutes, I could hear walking near the tent and someone or something sniffing around. That really freaked me out. What human walks around sniffing so loudly? The moon was bright that night, and I could see the outline of whatever was out there through the thin fabric of the tent. I know light can play tricks with shadows and whatnot, but this thing looked huge. It would stand on two feet at times and walk, then drop to four feet and sniff around on the ground. I almost screamed when I saw it do that, but covered my mouth and held my breath instead. After a bit, I guess it decided we weren't anything interesting because it started to walk off. I had to know what it was, so I creeped over to the opening of the tent and slowly unzipped the zipper. When I looked out, I almost freaked again because I thought it saw me. It stood up and turned around to look at the tent one last time. That's when I could clearly see what it was. It had a dog-like head, almost like a pincher. Fur covered its entire body. Its legs looked like a dog's, and even though it was big, it was really muscular. For a second, its bright red eyes met mine. I thought I was dead for sure, but instead, it just got back on all fours and ran off. I waited for maybe 10 minutes, then woke my friend. He didn't believe me when I told him what I had seen, but he could see how upset it made me. He agreed to go back to my house for the rest of the night, and that we would get the tent in the morning. Once daylight hit, we went back to retrieve our things. The ground was soft from being close to the river. Once he saw the footprints left in the dirt, he flipped and said he finally believed me. They looked like massive dog prints. Rarely we have heard coyotes down there and we've seen their prints, so we knew what those looked like. These were not them. We recovered our stuff and hightailed it out of there. When our parents asked us why we had come home so early, we told them that the sun had woken us up. They didn't know we had snuck back in after they were asleep. We never even thought of camping out in those woods again. I was driving home one night, north of Willamette Street, heading into Eugene, Oregon. It was getting late about 11 p.m. Traffic was fairly light, so the place was kind of deserted. Woods and fields on both sides of me. I was still a good ways out of town when something flashed in front of my headlights. It happened so fast that I couldn't get a good look at it at first. It was like something had just jumped out in front of me, and then they jumped out of the way. Seems like it cleared the road in two jumps. I slam on my brakes, freaked out, then looked around to make sure there's nothing else that's going to jump out in front of me. At first, I thought it was a deer, so I keep going, slow to start, just to be safe. That's when I notice a huge dark creature to my right that is keeping pace with me. Definitely not a deer, as I can make out by the moonlight that it's on two feet. I'm only doing about 25 miles an hour at this point and decide to speed up. Whatever it is, I don't want it to stay with me. I can't describe it, but I had a very bad feeling about this thing that was pacing me. I get up to 45 miles per hour and it's starting to fall back. In the side mirror, I can now make out a few features from my tail lights lighting it up. It was really big, maybe 7 feet tall, 100% on 2 feet, and I can't say for sure because it could have been my tail lights, but its eyes seemed to glow red. I need to mention why I thought it was a deer at first. It was because it was totally covered in fur or hair. I don't know of any two-legged wild animal that can run almost 45 miles per hour. It really gave me the creeps. If anyone has any ideas to what it could have been, please let me know. 
This happened a few weeks ago, and if anyone else has seen it on that road, tell me. I'm starting to think I might be going crazy. I have been backpacking and hiking almost my entire life, and I've never seen anything like I did a few weeks ago. Initially, the plan was to go out and hike the Rockies in Montana for Memorial Day weekend this year. It's a place I have been to frequently, and I'm very familiar with what types of animals are out there. I'd gotten a late start on the first day, and it was noon by the time I got out to the trailhead. Still, I geared up and started humping through the forest. All was good until I made camp for the night. The sun was about to set when I finished and started a fire. I had just sat down when I heard something similar to a yowl or a scream. It freaked me out at first. I had never heard anything like it before. Thought it might be some kids getting rowdy somewhere out there. With echoes and whatnot, it's not easy to pinpoint where sounds come from or how far away they really are. I didn't hear anything again until the sun had set all the way. It was about an hour later. I heard another one of those yowls or screams. This time it was definitely closer. I checked to make sure I had my 45 on me, just in case it was a mountain lion or something. Although I've never heard a mountain lion sound like that before, but I knew they were in the area along with wolves and bears, none of which this sounded like. I stayed close to the fire and kept my gun with me all night. The next day I continued further in. It felt like I was being watched now and I kept my hand on my gun for pretty much the whole day. Sometimes these animals will stalk their prey before they pounce, so I wanted to be extra ready just in case. There were no strange sounds or anything, but still. Sat down for lunch. Just some dehydrated food I had brought with me. Was opening the pouches and that's when I saw it out of the corner of my eye. Something big moved through the woods about a hundred feet from me. I stopped and looked around. Felt like five minutes had passed and there was no more movement, so I went back to my food. I was pretty much on high alert at this point and only ate bites as quick as I could. Then I heard something kind of lumbering through the brush behind me. The step sounded slow and heavy. I'm sure it wasn't a four-legged creature as the rhythm of the footfalls would have been different. Fearful that whatever it was might try to pounce on me from the back, I got up quickly and spun around. My hands always remained on my gun, but I didn't pull it, just in case it was some other hiker or something. I saw a flash of something big and hairy go between some trees. I don't know what it was, but I wasn't sticking around to find out. Even with my 45 on me, the size of the thing scared me to death. That was enough for me, and I began to hike back the way I came, almost at a full run. I heard the yowls one more time, but didn't stop to listen. In fact, when it got dark out, I turned on my flashlight and didn't stop all through the night until I got back to my car. When I got back to my house, I crashed from exhaustion. The next day I called Game and Wildlife to report my sighting. I thought they would have laughed at me, but they took it in stride. I'm not the first person to report seeing a big, hairy, unidentifiable creature out there before was what I was told. I have no clue what it was. All I know is that in all my years out in the woods, I've never seen or heard anything like it before. This happened back in the 90s, when I was about 11 or 12. I lived in a small town in eastern Washington surrounded by hills and forests. It wasn't unusual for me to spend a whole day out in the woods with my dog, an Alaskan Malamute named Indy, just like in the movie. We'd go walking and exploring wherever we could. There was a path I would normally take out there that split around a rather rocky hill. One way led through a field back into more forest. Another way went down into a heavily wooded ravine. The ravine was always cool because it just seemed more mysterious. Anyways, I went that way this time, and at the bottom of the ravine, someone had set up a campfire. Probably some people out there partying or camping, not really sure. I had been through there plenty of times, but this time something caught my attention. There was a fishing arrow next to the burnt out campfire. Kind of odd. What would people be doing with a fishing arrow in the woods far from any water? I went to pick it up being a curious kid and all, when I noticed something else odd on the tip of the arrow. There was what looked like long brown hair caught on the barbs. It wasn't human hair, it felt more like bear fur, but it was long, almost down to my ears when I held it on my head. 
It kind of reminded me of orangutan hair that I had seen in photos. Almost the same color too. I looked around for any clues of what might have happened there. No footprints or anything were discovered, but there were some strange claw marks on the trees. They were pretty high up, maybe six or seven feet on the tree. I was around five foot nine at the time, and some of them were a little over eye level or higher. Yes, I was around 11 or 12 at the time and about five foot nine. I was about to chalk it up as some kids fooling around back there and leave when my dog began to growl. He had walked with me back there all the time and had never done that before. He had chased a couple of snakes in the past, but never growled before doing it. He was set on something in the trees. When I looked to see what it was, I could hear something pushing past the bushes. Indy finally gave out a bark and that set whatever it was into a run or a jaunt. I got a bit of a look at it once it pushed up the ridge line opposite the rocky hill. It was big, probably seven or eight feet tall and covered in hair. No way was it human and a bear wouldn't run up a slope the way it did. Other features were lost to me in my fear and panic as I turned instantly and ran all the way home with Indy on my heels. I dropped the fishing spear while I was running. I wish I hadn't. Maybe I could have convinced my parents to have it tested or something. I don't know what it was that I saw. I continued to go back there for years and never had an experience like that again. When I went back there from then on, I always took my dog and a knife with me. I would occasionally see claw marks in spots from time to time. Sometimes at night, when I would camp in my backyard, there would be strange howls coming from the direction of the forest. Almost like someone screaming. Could have been mountain lions, definitely wasn't coyotes. I knew what they sounded like. I'm not really sure if the howls are related to what I saw or not, since when I saw it, it didn't make any kind of growl or howl, but I'm not really sure it wasn't either. Either way, there was something in those woods, and I think someone else had seen it too, and possibly tried to shoot it with a spear gun or something. I went back to try to find the fishing arrow, but it was lost somewhere in the tall grass. The area where this happened is now a residential community. Who knows what happened to that creature that I saw, or if others still see it today. I work on oil rigs. I have since I was 20, and I'm 33 now. In 2007, I was working for Nomac Drilling. They have since sold out to Patterson, and we were drilling in Haynesville for natural gas. Anyone who works on rigs knows that they can take you way off the beaten path from what normal civilization is used to. Some places, you're on ranch roads for an hour before you reach the location, and others, you're driving on roads canopied by trees in the backwoods of Louisiana. This happened to me in the latter. We were rigging down after finishing a well, and we were on our last night of the seven day hitch. About halfway through our 12 hour tour, and we had pretty much finished and we were making sure everything was tied down securely for the rig move. We killed the light plants, and the driller let us knock off early. This area was accessible outside Houghton, Louisiana, and the lease was actually on the back of the Barksdale Air Force Base, but we had to leave the way we came in. Driving home at 2 in the morning seemed pretty normal at first, and I made it to the blacktop with no issues. The blacktop was still canopied by trees, and other than the lights from my truck, everything was pitch black. Out of nowhere, still basically in the middle of nowhere, this motherfucker appears almost close enough to get hit on my driver's side. Okay, weird, but even more strange. He was leaning at what I swear was an impossible angle for someone not to tip over. They were stretched, reaching out towards my truck, and what I could see of the face was morbid and twisted. The hairs on the back of my neck raised, and I gassed it to speed back closer to society. It was about a two hour drive home, and I felt off for the rest of the trip. More oddly, I was working over on a separate occasion with one of the crews that work when I'm home, and another hand was talking about a very similar, if not identical, experience. I don't know who or what I saw and the face could have been a blur from relative distance, speed, and the time I actually saw them, but who was out that late and why? If someone was broke down, I could see them trying to flag me down, but this didn't seem to be the case here. I was around 11 years old, was out in the woods with my father, his girlfriend, and her daughter and dog. Now the town where this happened is sort of a crater with a big lake in the middle. My town was on one side, but this day we drove to the other side where no one lives. There used to be a skiing club there, but it's abandoned since ages. 
My dad parked the car in a sort of cul-de-sac in the woods. Us kids stayed in the car while the adults walked off with the dog. We sit there for maybe five minutes or so. I look to my right because I get a weird feeling from that area. And there it is, positioned just in between some trees before the woods become sparse. It sat there in the shadows just looking at us. Humanoid silhouette and red eyes. We were so scared we locked all the doors until our parents come back. We shout to them to please hurry into the car. Chaos ensues as they see our fright and start to try to open the doors at the same time as we're trying to unlock them. 20 seconds have never felt so long. They get in and my dad backs up the car to try to see it clearly but he positions the car wrong. But then we see something else there instead. We don't know what. My stupid brave dad leaves the car to walk over and have a closer look and what he sees next is really strange. It was as if some big invisible bird flapped its wings against him. You could clearly see the two sources from where the wind came and how it affected the plants and trees resembled nothing else than, well, two giant wings swung against him one time only. So he hurried back into the car, drove closer, put all the lights on and we can't see anything at first. We were looking for something big given the previous happening, but then we notice a small little shimmering being standing there just shimmering. For some reason this scared my dad more than anything and so he panicked and drove off in a hurry and we never looked back. With age I have started to wonder if it was something else than a troll but I don't know. I felt like the little one was trying to scare us off, save us, but I also feel like the shimmering might have been a trick. I'm pretty certain though that the little one saved us. Call it intuition. I get home from work. It's almost midnight. The door opens and the home security system does that high-pitched beep 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 chime. I'm in my kitchen eating a late dinner before going to bed. I hear a door open and then the home security thing go beep beep beep, but it definitely sounded like it came from outside. I'm sitting right by the back door, so I go check the front door. The front door has a screen door and a wooden door that leads to a small entry room, then a second door inside that that leads up the stairs and into the house. These are loud, old doors. I didn't hear the screen door open, and I didn't hear the main door close, but I also didn't hear the second door open. The door is just double locked and no other doors are opened. Nobody is standing outside. Okay. Maybe it was the neighbor's door, and maybe they have the same system. I hear it again, and it sounds like it's coming from outside of the front of the house. I look out the window. It looks like there's a deer outside. It's crawling on the yard, with its belly on the ground. It decides to stand up and continues to stand up, but on its back legs. The deer makes the beeping sound with its head raised up into the air. It's not a deer. It looks like a guy, but with deer legs. It's too dark to see what's really going on. I'm home. What the F? I'm home. The creature sounds like a dog is barking, but is trying to vomit at the same time. It starts to gallop away and across the street. Beep, beep, beep. What's weird about this is that I do not live in a rural area. The deer population typically stays down towards the outskirts of the city. I have never seen or heard anything like this. I'm 16 and I live in the backwoods of South Carolina. I've heard stories from the local kids of creepy things that happened in the forest, about two miles away from my new home. I decided to go check it out because how scary can it really be? I grab a pistol and a knife, as well as a flashlight, and I head out into the dense forest. As I'm in the forest, it starts to get dark. I turn on my flashlight. A heavy fog all of a sudden rolls in, bringing in a smell of copper and burnt hair. The hairs on the back of my neck start to stand on end. I start to hear this weird sound. 
It sounds like whispering and giggling. I hear something running around in the woods nearby. I hear it get louder and closer. I turn around to see something crawling extremely fast and low to the ground on all four legs. Whatever it was seemed to have arms and legs like a human. I fire a shot right into its back and I can see the blood splatter and a gunshot wound. It lets out a blood curdling screech and retreats back into the woods. The fog lifts and the smell suddenly goes away. I nope my way out of there, all the way home. I get home and there it is, right in my driveway. It runs towards me and I shoot at it, but the bolts don't seem to fire. My gun was on safety. It jumps up and all I can see are its huge white eyes, and I black out. I wake up some time later on top of my dad's car, with my dad standing over me, trying to wake me up. My head hurts like nothing else and my ears are ringing. I tell my dad what had happened in the woods, and he just laughs and tells me there's probably nothing. Life as I know it goes back to normal for about three hours, when my dad says, Hey Jake, mind getting me some of those steaks out of the fridge? I look at him and say, Dad, my name's Nick, not Jake. He just looks at me like he's full of hatred. I just give him the steaks and he just goes into his room with them, uncooked. He comes out of his room about an hour later with only the packaging and throws them away. I don't even think about asking what had happened. At 11 p.m. he tells me to go to bed, which is odd, because it's Friday and he doesn't usually care when I stay up, but I do as I'm told and I go to my room. Around 3.15 in the morning, my door opens. It's my dad. I say nothing and pretend to be asleep. The smell of copper returns to the air and I feel sick to my stomach. My dad just sits on the edge of my bed and just looks at me for what I would say to be about 30 minutes. He then mumbles something under his breath with the voice I don't recognize. My blood turns cold and I just lay there. He finally gets up and leaves and I finally am relieved but I cannot sleep the whole night and just lay there in my bed. Finally, the next morning, I get up and I go out into the living room. My dad is asleep on his lazy boy recliner and his nose is bleeding. I wake him up and I tell him I'm spooked and I ask him about the blood. He has no idea where it came from. I ask him about the night before and he has no idea what I'm talking about and he doesn't remember waking me up from being on top of his car. My heart drops when he states that it was still Friday, when I know for a fact that it was definitely Saturday. He argues with me until I show him my phone with the day and time. At this point, we are both freaked out. I've never ventured out into the woods since then, and nothing strange has happened, except sometimes I will hear the front door open and shut a few times during the night. I was 16 when this story happened. I have family down in Alabama. They farm and own a huge amount of land down in Huntsville. My uncle owned a big house and a bunch of trailers that they put out in the woods for hunting and camping. Down south, my cousin suggests that we go out there to camp. They know I'm a city kid and they like to tease me about being from Chicago. We collect some food, kill a pig and some chickens, and bring the necessities to camp out in the woods for a few days. We get to the camp and it's obvious that something is very wrong. The air has this weird electric smell like right before a storm, like the ozone. We think nothing of it and unpack and go down to the little creek to swim for a few hours. All of a sudden, some older white guy and a white teenager come out of the bushes. He has a shotgun in the crook of his arm and says hello and asks us what we're doing this far back into the land. 
we tell him about my uncle, who he knows, and say that we are out camping. He tells us to be real careful out here, and stick together when there's a big animal out in the woods. His son, who is my age, asks if he can stay to hang out with us. He says okay. We end up just goofing around the whole day, and we go back to camp, and we pull out some stuff for the campfire, even though the trailers both had kitchenettes. The crazy guy in the woods' son, Tanner, says that he wants to run home. His family's property sits up next to my uncle's, and asks if he can come out camping with us later. My cousin Rooster says that he's going to go with them since it's pretty dark, and one of the girls that is with us says that she's going to walk with them. It's about 7 o'clock right now, and it's starting to get pretty dark. They take flashlights with them, and they take the trail towards Tanner's property. The rest of us just chill and make s'mores. About 30 or 40 minutes later, there's a smell of ozone again. You can smell it over the smell of the fire. It smells like this really nasty copper smell, like right after you had a nosebleed and it stopped. It wasn't exactly like dried blood. It was that nasty metallic back of your throat smell. We immediately think that it's some kind of electrical malfunction, or someone left the hot plate on or something. We search the trailers and nothing is on. All we can do is just smell that terrible smell. All of a sudden, we can hear these people booking down the path towards us. Tanner, my cousin, and one of the girls all come running into the clearing out of breath, and they didn't even break stride. They all ran into the trailer right by where the fire was. We all immediately nope out of there and get into the trailers. They end up coming down and even my cousin is crying his eyes out at this point. All the while, the fire is getting lower and lower, so my other cousins say, F this, and go outside to go fix one of the generators out in the shed. My cousin says, no one's going outside, and locks the front door. Ain't nobody else is going out. He's been crying too hard and his eyes are bloodshot and puffy. His pants are so dirty. He tells us that they went up to Tanner's house and talked to his father to make sure that they could go camping with us. The father said to make sure to pack a rifle, just in case. Because a few days before, one of their pigs that they farmed was ripped up and eaten. They just assumed that it was one of the big cats or maybe a coyote. So they start walking back towards where we were camping. My cousin finally stops crying and shaking, and one of the girls that were with them says that they are starting to walk back when they got a really weird feeling. They then started to hear something in the forest. It was almost pitch black at this time, so they weren't sure at first what was going on. The girl says that she heard something in the bushes off to the trail on the right, and they all beamed their flashlights over there, and there was someone standing back in the woods in a little hollow. My cousin said that they shouted at him and told him that he was scaring people out in the woods and that he should not be out there. My cousin continues and says that they realized that the guy was facing away from them, so they keep walking, and they start smelling that nasty coppery ozone smell. And they say that they've looked off into the forest on the opposite side, and it's just a dude standing in the forest, backwards slightly closer to the path. So they start walking back to our campsite, and Tanner realizes that he accidentally left the rifle. As they're telling the story, the smell is super strong, even inside the cabin. They say that after they started walking faster, that a kind of low gibbering had started coming out from both sides of the woods, and they started booking it back to the trailer. The girl said that she flashed her flashlight out into the woods to the side of them, and that something jerking itself through the woods and the gibbering got louder and louder, and when they could finally see the light of our camp, something behind them started sprinting at them as hard as they could. The natural reaction was to run away as fast as they could and into the campsite. That brings us to now. So we're out in the woods, and we are assuming at this point that it's just some rednecks or something trying to mess with us. All of a sudden, my other cousin, Junior, starts going on about how he went to school with the native kid, that he was telling him about this goat man or something. We all collectively promptly tell him to shut up because we don't need anything spooky right now. But he just keeps going on and on about how it's this goat man, and how we're in the woods and blah blah blah. 
Now at the time, I've never heard of the Goatman, or anything like that. But a couple of years ago, before I graduated from college, I've had a friend, or a roommate I should say, that was pretty well versed on the subject. To sum it up, it's basically the sky with the head of a goat, and he can shapeshift and get among groups of people to terrorize them. It's also supposed to be this kind of wendigo thing, kind of like a skinwalker. It's bad mojo to even talk about it, and even worse, if you see it. Keep in mind, I didn't know this back when I was 16, so my cousin is going on about this goat man and how it's going to try to get us. The girls are all terrified, and my cousins and I are trying to figure out if it's just some hillbillies or if it's actually this weird shape-shifting animal. All of a sudden, the smell just goes away. Like, to this day, I haven't even experienced anything like it. Like, usually smells fade away or get less strong, but this just literally just goes away. After an hour or so, we stop crapping ourselves enough to go back outside and to stoke the fire up again. We figure it was just some a-holes trying to F with us out in the woods, and we decide not to go home. Because of this, we decide that it might be a good idea to make the fire nice and bright, to scare away any animals that it could have been. Nothing else weird happens that night, and we stay another night, and for the main part of the night, nothing happens. About one in the morning, we're outside getting drunk and telling ghost stories. As someone is finishing a spooky story, I don't remember what about, that smell comes back. And it is so strong, like one of the strongest smells I've ever experienced. It's so strong in fact, that one of the girls literally starts vomiting. I stand up and you can actually feel how clammy the air is. I say that we should get inside, this isn't right, we should have just left when we could. We all go back inside and we're standing around, and my cousin just keeps going on about how it's this goat man again. My cousin tries to shut him up. All this time I am feeling this weird feeling in my gut, and I can't figure out what it is. We end up sitting in there for a while. The smell is just as strong and we're terrified. We're all huddled in this camper. We end up cooking brats for everyone because nobody wants to go outside. The brats are packed in a four pack and we have a total of three packs all together. I grill them up on the stove and everybody gets a hot dog. I get mine and after a while, one of my cousins gets up and goes over to the pot to get another. He starts grumbling about how do I get two and everyone else only gets one hot dog. I look at him like he's an idiot. I tell him that everyone got one because there's only 12 brats and everyone got one, thus 12 people. If he wanted more, he should have brought them. That's when one of the people with our group starts screaming, Oh my gosh, get out of the cabin now. Everyone starts crying and shivering, and it finally dawns on one of the cousins what is actually happening. Me and my cousin both glance around the room, and I feel my heart sink. We all run out of the cabin, and I begin counting. There's actually 11 of us all together. How was there 12 of us when we were inside? On this trip, we brought a lot of people with us. Some people we didn't know very well. Thus, it was kind of difficult to kind of keep track of who was who. We all finally calmed down, and we decide it's best that we all spend the night back inside the little camper that we have. Everyone spends the rest of the evening on their toes. I don't think many of us got any sleep that night. Did we actually stay in a room with a skinwalker and not know about it? That's really something I wish not to think about. This story happened a couple of years ago. It was me and my group of friends that we would go camping with quite often. It was our junior year and we had two weeks left before school started. We wanted to have fun and we decided to go camping deep out into the woods. During this time, me and my friends were kind of into survivalism. We wanted to go camping with the bare essentials. We only brought some food and some tools that we could build a shelter with, and a couple of sleeping bags. I also brought a tarp just in case if things didn't work out. We literally picked a random patch of woods to go camping in. We went early in the day and tried to set up camp. We found a couple of sticks and logs and tried to put them together to make a shelter. I'm actually quite impressed looking back on how well we did. It did take us about 4 or 5 hours to make a decent shelter for all 4 of us. I wouldn't recommend it. After spending most of the day building our shelter, we were pretty hungry. 
As we were eating, it was around 6 or 7 in the evening. We decided to tell some scary ghost stories to make things more fun. We told your basic ghost stories. Nothing too crazy. There was one that was kinda good, but wasn't that scary. As the night got later, and the fire got more dim, that's when the more interesting stories came out, and we started talking about skinwalkers. I had heard about them before, but I haven't heard about some of the additional information that I heard that night. Apparently, skinwalkers used to be people, and they kind of sold their soul to the devil or something. By doing so, this granted them powers, the ability to change from one shape to another, mostly animals. I kind of had an idea about that, but this I didn't know. When you spoke, or even thought of the word skinwalker, it would draw their attention to you. Of course, me and my friends were skeptical about this idea. That's kind of silly, don't you think? Deep down though, something about that kind of terrified me. From that point on, I was kind of on edge that evening. As the fire was practically out, we'd realized that all the noise outside had suddenly stopped. All the wildlife, all the animals, stopped making their usual noises. Even the bugs that constantly bugged us during the evening had stopped making noise. Everyone, as if at once, ears kind of perked up into the air, searching for that sound, hoping for something normal to be happening. But deep down, we knew that it wasn't. Something was happening. It was bringing out this primitive nature of us that kind of put us on edge, as if there was a predator nearby. None of us said anything. We just listened to the crackling of the fire as it slowly faded into the night. As the fire got dimmer and dimmer, we could hear something getting slowly and slowly louder, as if it was approaching us from a far distance. This sound was accompanied by this horrible smell. It was as if there was rancid meat being hung from this dirty trash can that was blowing right into all of our faces. Being the tough guys that we were, and the idiots, we realized that none of us had packed a flashlight, kind of going with the theme of survivalism and having the bare essentials. There was definitely something in the woods making its way through the brush. Whatever the creature was, it didn't sound small. It could have maybe been a moose or something, but during this time of year was quite unlikely. All of us were quietly scanning the tree line, trying to see if we could see what it was that was stalking around our campsite. That's when I had this odd idea. I told all of my friends about what we heard earlier about the skinwalkers. I told them all to stop thinking about them, and that hopefully they would go away. Normally, my friends would have made fun of me for suggesting such a silly idea, but I think they were so scared that they had no choice but to agree with me. I then brought up a random conversation, anything to take our minds off of what was happening, and it seemed to be working. The sounds from around our campsite seemed to be going away, as did the smell. About 30 minutes later, it was as if all things were back to normal. The sounds of the forest came back to our ears, and we were pretty excited. I then made the suggestion that we should pack up and go back home, considering what was going on. It was about 1 in the morning, but it seemed like a better idea than staying out here for the rest of the night, especially with those creatures. I proposed the idea, and unanimously, my friends all agreed that we should have left a long, long time ago. One of the perks of not having much material when you go camping is that you don't have to pack up as much. We were packed up in about 15 minutes, all four of us, including putting out the fire. We were out of our campsite in record time, back onto our trail, hiking back to our cars. Unfortunately, this hike was about 20 minutes, and none of us had a flashlight. As we were hiking, I couldn't help but think what had happened earlier. That's when the smell came back. But not just the smell, the sounds of multiple creatures coming through the woods slowly approached our rear. There wasn't just one creature, there was at least three of them. My friends seemed to be catching on, and we tried to return back to our tactic of not thinking about it. But we were out in the woods with no light, being stalked by three skinwalkers. The task of not thinking about it 
was nearly impossible. We were about 10 minutes in when we started hearing what sounded like our friends being mimicked by a weird radio. The sounds sounded staticky and it wasn't quite perfect impressions of our friends. The skinwalkers were mimicking what we had been saying all night, saying phrases that we had said that evening as if they'd been listening, trying to perfect what we say and how we say it. My friends wanted to stop and try to turn around and confront these creatures. I told them that, that that was not possible. We had to keep moving forward, or else. At this point, we start sprinting down this trail. We have no idea where we're going. It's pitch black, and the things behind us are now screeching and screaming. These terrible sounds. We finally go to where we think our cars are. By some miracle, we are able to find our way back to our cars. At this point, all of our gear has been dropped and we have nothing but our shoes and clothes on our backs. We all jump in my truck and thankfully it was a four-door. We're all inside and I turn on the car and my headlights are on, facing the woods that we just had exited. The sight that laid before us was terrifying. About 20 yards away from us, in the woods, stood three creatures. They were all about 8 feet tall. The creatures looked like a crossbreed between a moose and a wolf. All of them had very large antlers. Some of them were broken off. Some of them were stained red. But all of them had very, very large teeth. Their eyes were a piercing red, and it was as if they were glowing. But all of these features do not come remotely close to as to what was most terrifying about these creatures. They were all standing on their hind legs.